What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff is about to pop off in the tropics. We're going to cover all of it. We have Hurricane Nigel that is currently meandering in the Atlantic Ocean. It has just entered the subtropical Atlantic. Look at how large the eye is right now. We're going to go ahead and get a closer look at this. This eye uh, size right here is incredibly large. It was a lot larger earlier this morning right here. You can see... Right here, this eye, uh, this eye based off of what I'm looking at, was about 50 miles wide or some. It has shrunk to about 40, 30 to 40 miles wide, but it's still quite a large system nevertheless. It currently, as of right now, has winds of 90 miles per hour in the subtropical Atlantic, pressure of 975 millibars. It's moving uh, west, north northwest at 16 miles per hour, and it's currently located at 13.5 degrees north, 54.4 degrees west, so it has just entered the subtropical Atlantic. For those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, about the tro subtropical Atlantic, the subtropics start at 30 degrees north, and they end at 60 degrees north, and then it goes to polar, and anything from 30 degrees north to the equator is tropical. So that's what I'm talking about when I say subtropical, and the system is moving a lot faster than we were originally anticipating it to be. And here's what we have for the public advisory right here. Hurricane force winds extend out 45 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds extend out 175 miles from the center. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Based on how large the eye is, that isn't exactly sustainable. So either that wind field is going to push out or that eye is going to continue to contract. It's going to be one way or the other. But based off the cone that we have right here, this storm is moving a lot faster than we originally thought it would be. It is expected to start, and it is already starting to make that turn. It's expected to complete that turn by tomorrow evening, although I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, based on the fact that it's moving at 16 miles per hour, I think that turn could be completed by either tomorrow, uh, late tomorrow morning or early tomorrow afternoon, based off of what I am seeing. So... This thing continues to move. It starts gradually weakening, and then it becomes post-tropical. It then approaches the UK, but then it turns to the north towards potentially Iceland, which is out of complete, which is a complete surprise right here by Sunday. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that for those of you who are watching from Iceland, from those of you who are watching from the UK, Ireland, the British Isles. So we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Here's the discussion right here. It is currently, right as of right now, expected to get up to Category 2 strength with winds of 105 miles per hour in the next 24 hours before gradually weakening down to back down to Category 1. Then by 60 hours out, we're at a 75 miles per hour. Then three days out, we're at a post-tropical cyclone at 65, then 60, then 45 as it moves north into stronger wind shear and cooler waters as we continue to look at it. So that's what we have going on with Hurricane Nigel as of right now. And next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is this new area of interest right here that has been tagged by the National Hurricane Center. That is off the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas. So here's what we have. A non-tropical area of low pressure is expected to form east of the Florida Peninsula this week. If this system could acquire some subtropical characteristics this weekend while it moves generally northward. Regardless of subtropical development, this low is likely to bring gusty winds, heavy rain, and high surf conditions along the portions of the coastal Carolinas into the coastal mid-Atlantic states late this week into the weekend. Please see more products in the local NWS, yada, yada, yada. 30% chance of formation in the next seven days. It was at 20 last time we reported it here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on it. And models have been really picking up on this. And we'll show you that in just a minute. But... The biggest concern I have for Nigel really moving the fa uh, pace it is and turning faster than it is is because it could potentially sub this area of interest to be, in my opinion, potentially a, a system that could impact a lot of land. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, and we'll go ahead and read what we have going on. Still a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. Eastern Tropical Atlantic, a tropical wave is expected to move off the west coast of Africa by tomorrow. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development of this wave thereafter, and a tropical depression is the likely form this week or this weekend while it moves generally westward across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. Once again, we have a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. And this is something we're going to have to keep a very close eye on because we've seen some more model runs come in and the shift has been pretty interesting to say at the very least as a lot of the models have this thing shifting more and more to the west compared to where we were with the north, west, northwest rather excuse me on that. 
And we'll go ahead and show you those model runs right now. First one, uh, one up, of course, is the European model. This the European has uh, Nigel continuing to intensify, although not as much, down to a 985 millibar system before moving off over here. And then it has this area of interest over here near the Bahamas and the Carolinas starting to organize and develop. It starts at 1,009 and starts to just kind of stays there and gradually organizes, gradually develops, potentially gradually strengthens, makes landfall in the near South Carolina as a 1,005 millibar system as it approaches North Carolina and Virginia right here. So that's going to be, a even if it doesn't intensify at a very fast pace and if it's not very strong, it's still going to be a pretty major flooding threat for those of you who are in the path of this. So that's what we have going on right here. But this is what I'm paying attention to right here. This tropical wave that's expected to organize and develop and the high pressure system that's expected to build up. The European doesn't really have much going on right now. It has it actually being absorbed with another area of interest over there, which compared to what I've seen with other model runs, I'm not 100% sure that I can trust that at this time. And and it's also having this uh, this high pressure system just absolutely just dissipate out of absolutely nowhere six days out. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I'm not 100% sure if I can trust the European at this time. It still can happen for sure, but based off of what I'm seeing with the NHC and the current conditions, as well as the fact that other models are picking up on this uh, cont continual shift, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Next one we're going to go ahead and show you is this GFS model right here. GFS has Nigel intensifying to a cat 2 and then has this thing really organizing and potentially intensifying at a pretty alarming rate down to up to strong tropical storm strength if it becomes tropical at least and it makes landfall in North Carolina brings a lot of flooding to the Carolinas and Virginia and then into Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania and New England right there. So we'll have to pay very very close attention to it. But what I'm also picking up on, though, is that area of interest that, G that the NHC has tagged. And here's what's go uh, what may potentially be going on with it. The, G the G GFS is actually having this calling for this to gradually organize and develop as it's approaching the Antilles. This is actually a considerable shift to the south and actually a considerable shift in intensity from where we were before. And it has this thing making landfall... In, in the next week or so, about 180 hours out near the Antilles, and then enters the Caribbean and starts intensifying at a very fast pace, gets down to a 947 millibar system, which could be either a Category 3 or Category 4 system, and based off the conditions, that does look ideal for development, and then it approaches Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and then starts to make that turn to the north as this low-pressure system starts to att attract it, and then it hits the Bahamas as a pretty strong system, and then moves out to sea as... as so right here and then just very much moves due east and dissipates as we look forward according to the GFS. Keep in mind by the time all this action goes down it's about seven days out so we'll have to keep a very close eye on it as time continues to progress but it is a very real possibility for sure. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model right here. Here's the CMC that we have pulled up. Basically, it has the system starting in the Bahamas starting to gradually organize and develop right here, and things really start to get very intense. This actually gets down to a 993 millibar, potentially Category 1 equivalent hurricane right here before making landfall in North Carolina, bringing a lot of impacts to Virginia, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, New potentially New York City, and Con uh, Connecticut, v Rhode Island, Massachusetts again. And then just moves ashore like that, which is pretty interesting. And then this thing starts to gradually organize and develop as it approaches the Antilles right here. It does uh, it does make a bit of more of a uh, of a turn than it was previous, but based off what we were seeing with the trends, this is where we were at the 12Z CMC yesterday, a little bit further to the east than it was. Here's the 0Z CMC. Here's the 12Z boom. There is a clear tr there's a clear trend to a uh, clear trend to the west that I have been noticing quite and that's a very alarming situation that I am paying attention to because if we continue to see these models trend more and more to the west, that's going to bring more uh, potentially more and more impacts to the lesser Antilles and if this gets into the Caribbean, it puts a lot of people in play and it's all going to depend on this high pressure system that's expected to build up after Nigel passes. So the quicker Nigel moves and the quicker Nigel gets out of the Atlantic Basin, the quicker this high-pressure system can build up and potentially curve this thing towards land uh, towards the end of September. So we'll have to pay a very, very close attention to it as time is, continues to go on. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the Icon model, which I find pretty interesting for a few reasons. 
First, we're going to go ahead and show you this system right here as it's getting down to a 999 millibar system before approaching the outer banks of the Carolinas while bringing lots of impacts from Virginia to New England. Apparently, as either a subtropical or tropical storm as it moves through, brings a lot of impacts to Chesapeake Bay, potentially D.C., Maryland, Baltimore, Delaware, those areas right there. But while that's doing that... This area of interest down here that the NHC has tagged has us pushing a bit further to the south. There's a high pressure system that's built, built up right here that's going to steer this further and further to the west. And then things start to gradually organize and develop. The, the icon is actually pretty slow when it comes to organization and development, which means that this, the slower this thing takes to strengthen, the more time it takes to organize. That potentially means the more, uh, the more, the closer this could get to the Antilles, excuse me, and potentially more impacts it could bring before it approaches that very high ocean heat content uh, value near the Bahamas, not the Bahamas, but near the Antilles. So here's what we have with condition-wise. Here's the global sea temperatures for those of you who are wanting to know what's going on. Global sea temperatures, if it takes the path of the icon, it's going to be in 28 to 30 plus degrees Celsius, or even sometimes, some places even more than that, or 82 to 86 plus degree Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States. And then as it moves into that 30 degree waters, it could potentially intensify if the conditions are right and potentially intensify at a very fast rate. Uh, as time continues to go on. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the ocean heat content. And this is go this is twofold for both the Bahama storm and the potential uh, uh, potential tropical wave that's going to be organizing and developing in the main development region where the bah where the Bahama storm is going to be it's going to be in a very consistent area of 100 to 125 ocean heat content, and the global sea temperatures are 28 to 30 plus degrees Celsius or 82 to 86 plus degree Fahrenheit for those of you, once again, living in the Carolinas, Georgia, those areas right there. And then as it moves into the western half, and then... As for this system right here, as it slowly moves through uh, the eastern half of the MDR, the the uh, the ocean heat content values do kind of stay the same around 25 to 50, but then they really start to increase as they move into the western half of the MDR, gets up to 75, 100, 125, 150 OHC as it's approaching the Caribbean, and if the GFS model is the one that's the more accurate one, this thing could be potentially intensifying at a very fast pace if all the conditions work well for it. So here's what we have going on for wind shear. Western half of the main development region has been off and on, off and on, off and on with the wind shear values over here. And then through the east, this part of the MDR and parts of the Caribbean, very low wind shear as of right now. That's expected to fluctuate in the next few days or so. And where the Bahamas are right now, there is quite a bit of wind shear right now. I expect that to continue to fluctuate as time continues to go on. We'll have to keep an eye on it for sure. Eastern, Atlant Eastern Atlantic, though, things have really started to improve. The shear from 24 hours ago, a lot of it was clouded across the MDR. Now it's a lot more, ch it's a lot changed from here. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how this, how this new system plays out and how that new wind shear uh, potential basically allows it to capitalize. We'll keep an update for you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.